Hello there and welcome back to the last unit of AP Psychology. In this video, we are going to review attributions, attitudes, and perceptions. As always, if you find value in these topic review videos, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet for all things psych. Now, whenever we attempt to accomplish something, interact with others, or observe different behaviors, we try to rationalize the outcome, make assumptions about the person and their motives, and try to explain the situation in a way that works for us. One theory that looks at this is the attribution theory, which proposes that a person's behavior can either be indicative of the person's personality or be indicative of the person's situation. Essentially, this theory looks at how we explain our own behaviors and the behaviors of others. This theory consists of dispositional attribution and situational attribution. Dispositional attribution is when a person blames or credits another person's internal characteristics for the behavior. While situational attribution is when a person blames or credits that situation for causing the behavior. For instance, let's say you're taking the AP exam and during the exam, the person next to you keeps tapping their pencil on their desk. At the end of the exam, you complain that the test didn't really go well for you because you couldn't concentrate and that you would have done a lot better if the person next to you stopped tapping their pencil. This would be situational attribution. Notice here you are blaming the sound of the pencil for your poor performance on the test. On the other hand, let's say you did well on your AP exam, but another one of your peers did not. When talking with your friends about the test after you took it, you explained to them that the test was easy and that anyone who put work into the class and isn't lazy should have done just fine. Notice in this example, the cause of failure is on the individual and their internal characteristics, making this dispositional attribution. If we connect back to previous units, we can see that situational attribution is similar to the idea of external locus of control, while dispositional attribution is similar to the idea of internal locus of control. Speaking of the attribution theory, we also need to review the fundamental attribution error, which is when a person incorrectly attributes a person's action. Oftentimes, the observer underestimates the situation and overestimates the impact of personal disposition. For instance, say one teacher only sees the student Jade during lunchtime. During lunch, Jade is always talking and laughing with her peers. The teacher makes the assumption that Jade is outgoing and is more of an extrovert. However, another teacher has Jade in class, and during class, Jade doesn't talk or participate with her peers. The teacher then makes the assumption that Jade is shy and is more of an introvert. Later in the day, the two teachers get together and talk and realize they have completely different ideas about who Jade is and what she is like. Notice in this example, both teachers focused on disposition and not the situation. In fact, they both ignored the power of the situation and focused internally on the person. Oftentimes, it's easy to overestimate the impact of a person's personality when situations actually have more power than you may think. Another way to look at the fundamental attribution error is by looking at how we view our own actions against another person who does the same thing. For instance, say you did well on a test in class, but another student in the class did poorly. Oftentimes you would say it's dispositional, saying I did well on the test because I am a hardworking student and I studied hard. But let's say you didn't do so well on that test and another student did. Oftentimes you might say it's situational, stating that I could have gotten a better grade if I was as smart as them or if I had more time to study. The opposite is true if we look at bad behavior. Say you're trying out for the basketball team and end up not making the team. You might be tempted to say it's situational. Oh, I wasn't feeling good that day or the coach had it out for me. We take the blame off ourselves and put it onto external factors. But if let's say another person didn't make the team, well, we might say it's dispositional. After all, it probably was their fault for not practicing enough or not trying hard enough during tryouts. Notice how in this situation, we are putting the blame on the individual. We can compare the fundamental attribution error with the actor-observer bias, which is the tendency to attribute one's own actions to external causes while attributing other people's behaviors to internal causes. And all this brings me to our next two concepts, 
the self-serving bias, and the just world hypothesis, both of which were in our previous examples. A self-serving bias is when we as individuals look at our actions and or reflect back on events we were part of. And if they were negative, well, we attribute the responsibility onto the situation. But if they were positive, well, then we credit ourselves for the achievement. We can see that we often unknowingly tweak our perception of the power of the situation to make ourselves feel better. If it's a positive outcome, then it's dispositional. And if it's a negative outcome, well, then it was the situation. Now, before we go on to the just world hypothesis, I also want to mention the confirmation bias, which is when we seek information that aligns with our point of view and dismiss information that challenges our beliefs and perceptions. This often helps support and reinforce our self-serving bias. All right, so that's the self-serving bias and the confirmation bias. Up next is the just world hypothesis, which is the tendency for people to believe that the world is fair and things are the way they are for a reason. Essentially, if you're a good person, then good things will happen to you because you're good. But if you're a bad person, then bad things will happen to you because you're bad. That's why the just world hypothesis is often associated with victim blaming. For instance, let's go back to our example of another person being cut from the basketball team. By viewing that person's outcome as dispositional and saying if they would have worked harder, they might have made the team, we take the blame and put it solely on the individual. We assume in this situation that the world is fair, and of course, only the best people will make the team. So if you didn't make the team, that means that you are not the best. But we ignore the possibility that there were other factors at play, such as the health of the person, the mood of the coach, politics, money, or other factors outside of the individual's control. Changing gears, let's say now that we are viewing the actions of someone who we look favorably on. Maybe it's because they had a good first impression on us, or because they had a positive impact impact on our lives, we most likely will view them with a phenomenon known as the halo effect, which is when a person interprets the actions and information from another person in a favorable way. This would explain why when your friend fails a test, you're more likely to empathize with them and say that the test was not fair or that the teacher was being mean. But if a student in the class failed that you do not like or you don't have a relationship with, well, you're more likely to say they should have studied harder or tried more in the class. Moving the focus back to how we view ourselves, let's talk about the false consensus effect. This is when a person overestimates how others think and act. Oftentimes, this leads a person to think that more people think like them than they really do. For instance, I think the best Star Wars TV shows are The Clone Wars, Rebels, and Ahsoka. I tend to think that most people would agree with me, but in reality, there are plenty of people who do not like any of those shows due to the animation style or personal preference. One of the reasons why the false consensus effect occurs is that we as people want to believe that our views and beliefs are normal and accepted in society, so we tend to adopt the view that other people must also think like us. So we can see that our attitude influences our actions and our perceptions, and that leads us to our last term of the video, which is the self-fulfilling prophecy. This is when a person's beliefs lead to its fulfillment. Essentially, a person has a prediction that directly or indirectly causes itself to become true. For example, let's say that you believe you are not good at taking tests. Then that might result in you studying less, because why study? You're not good at doing tests. Then you do poorly on the test, which reinforces the idea that you're a bad test taker. And even if you study for the test, most likely you probably don't use the best effective methods for studying. And then when you do poorly on the test, again, accept the fact that you're not a bad test taker, which in reality probably is not true. You just haven't figured out yet how to study and prepare for your test. I know you can do it. Don't give up. All right, well, there you have it. The first video of unit nine is done. Now comes the time to review, answer the questions on the screen, and when you're done, check your answers in the comment section down below. As always, if you need more help with AP Psychology, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet and the Discord server for more help. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.